All right, thanks a lot for joining me back here watching Casio. I appreciate all the views on my last video for the GBX100. In this one, I wanted to take a deeper dive and get a closer look at some of the features of this watch. And also, I'd like to bring up some of the pros and cons that I've noticed since I've been wearing this for the past couple of days. So let's hop right in and give it another look. Alright, so right off the bat, the first pro is that this watch is super comfortable. It's 66 grams, so it's not very bulky or heavy. The urethane bands on this watch are really soft and feel really good against the wrist. The strap is long enough to fit a variety of wrists. It has plenty of holes in it. And the wings on the lugs actually help it hug your wrist and stay in place. So overall, the comfortability factor is top notch on this watch. All right, the next pro for this watch is that the display is great. It's perfect in both bright sunlight and in darkened rooms. And this is actually probably the first negative display watch that I can actually read in a darker room. It's highly reflective, so out in the sunlight, it's perfectly legible. And the viewing angles are great. You know, on some LCD watches, the numbers kind of disappear when you tilt them, but this one has excellent viewing angles. The two LED backlights are very strong and bright. And actually, here's a shot of the backlight in a darkened room. Really bright. It illuminates the entire face evenly. And overall, I'm just really impressed with the way this memory and pixel display came out. Pretty high quality. Another pro of this watch is that the step counter is accurate and very helpful. And you can get to the step counter from timekeeping mode by just pressing A once. And as you can see here, I currently have four days of data. My target value is 10,000 steps. So the number there up top is your daily steps. And then of course it gives you a seven day view of all of your steps. And as far as I can tell, the accelerometer in this watch makes the step counter pretty accurate. Uh, the way it works is that when you start walking, it won't count steps for, I think, 10 seconds or so, just to make sure that you are walking. And then as soon as that it detects that you are walking, it'll add those 10 steps into your count. And that's one thing I've missed from my fitness watches is being able to have a step counter pretty handy. So it is nice to be able to get to the step counter with one button from timekeeping mode. So that's one of the features I really love about this watch. All right, on to my next pro. The next one is that I really like how this watch organizes most of the settings from one main menu. So in timekeeping mode, just hold down the A button and you get a full listing of settings right here. And from right here, you can use the A and the C buttons to scroll up and down the four menus. So you've got home time, time adjust, world time, alarm settings, there's tide, moon, and sun settings. And below that, you've got profile mode for setting up your profile, configuration of the beeps, configuration of the light for either auto light or one and a half to three seconds, vibration mode, Bluetooth pairing, which is pretty easy to set up, airplane mode for when you're traveling, uh, a phone finder for when you lose your phone, units where you can set up either imperial or metric units, a reset button, and a link to view some regulatory information. All right, let's check out a few more settings in detail. So again, I'm gonna hold down A. So in most menu settings, B is select. So I'm gonna go ahead and press B to get into my home time. And then you can select your city here from a bunch of presets, or you can choose a city from the app itself, from the G-Shock Move app. The D button goes back in most menu settings. All right, so if you go to time adjust, this is where you can set up the time of the watch either through a Bluetooth connection or manually. So if I select manual, you can then use the A and C buttons to scroll up or down in any field. And the B button will allow you to switch fields. So you can select hours, minutes, year, month, and day. And unfortunately, I cannot find any setting on the watch or in the app to configure European date mode, where the day comes first and the month comes second. And that seems like kind of a big oversight to me. 
But nonetheless, once you are done setting, you can press the D button and you can either save, uh, not save, or return to time setting mode. I'm going to go ahead and press D button to back out and select no, and that brings me back brings me back to the menu here. And you can also select 12 or 24 hour mode. And the next one here is world time mode, where you can set up your dual time or secondary time by picking a city here. All right, and alarm mode is where you can set one of four alarms. I have none set up right now, which is why they're all defaulting to noon. All right, and the next one in the list is Tide, Moon, and Sun, where you can set your port. So this is one of the potentially confusing things about the watch, is that you can set your port a variety of ways. You can either use the first option here to set the port through the app, where you basically scroll around a map and you point and click for which uh, location you want to use for your port. Or you can set a preset directly from the watch, and they have a whole bunch of ports that are preset some of the more popular beaches around the world so you can do that right from the watch and finally you can use a user setting which allows you to specifically customize the latitude and longitude of a location directly from the watch all right the next one is your profile where it asks you to enter your height and weight your sex your birthday and which wrist you're wearing the watch on there's also a beep setting where you can set the tones for either operation of the watch or for notifications like alarms and timers. The light setting allows you to configure the auto light, which will turn on when you twist your wrist, or the duration of the backlight, which is either one and a half or three seconds. And same with vibration as well. I actually really like the vibration motor inside this watch. It's super helpful and handy. Bluetooth pairing mode is next. Obviously, that's where you can either connect or unpair your watch. It's a pretty simple process. I'm not going to go through it here, but it's pretty typical, and I had no trouble setting up the watch at all. Airplane mode is for when you want to turn off the Bluetooth receiver in the phone. Phone finder, obviously, is where you can choose to find your phone. You just tap execute with the B button, and it will ring your phone. And then we have units, where you can specify either imperial or metric units. So distance, you can do kilometers or miles. For calories, you can do calories or joules. Height, you have centimeters or feet. Weight, you have kilograms or pounds. And for the tide height, you can either do centimeters or feet. And as I mentioned in the unit settings, there's no way to set the European date settings, unfortunately. And lastly, you can choose to reset all the settings on your watch, or you can view some regulatory information. So that's it for the main settings of the watch, and I actually like how it's laid out. It's pretty handy. There are some other settings in the watch. For example, in timer mode, you can hold down the A button, and this allows you to set up uh, anywhere from 1 to 20 interval timers, which is pretty handy. And then you can, of course, set up your minutes and your seconds for your timer. All right, another pro I like about this watch is that the time is always displayed pretty much no matter what mode you are in. For example, if I press A from timekeeping mode in step counter mode, the time is displayed at the bottom. Same with my monthly activity mode and also world time mode, obviously, where the dual time is up top and your time is at the bottom. They can really pack a lot of info on this MIP display and I really appreciate that. And then from timekeeping mode, if you press D to go into the tide modes, here you have the sunrise and sunset, moon phase, and moon age screen with the time down below. And then same thing with the secondary tide screen where it has the sunrise and sunset info, the port at the top, the moon phase data, the size of the tide, and then at the bottom you have your time. And then on what they call the big tide mode where you have again the port name up top, the high and low tide times, the uh, height in uh, centimeters or feet for the tides, and then your time at the bottom. So pretty much no matter where you are in the watch, you'll always have your time displayed, even in timer mode and stopwatch mode, although the activity page or the notification page, you do not have it on there. 
but everywhere else the time is displayed and that's pretty handy I think. So there's another feature which is both a pro and a con and that is the notification system. So right now notifications are turned off on the watch. So you can either pull up the app to turn them back on or you can go to one of these settings and turn them on directly from the watch. So if I use the C button to head on over to the notification screen, all I have to do is hold down the A button and you can either select off or you can select on or you can select on but off for running. So there's essentially three different notification modes. So I'm gonna go ahead and select on, press B. It says setting complete. And now we can go back to the timekeeping mode, although there is no icon that says that notifications are turned on. So here's a typical notification that pops up on your phone. This is a text message, and it displays on the phone for about 30 seconds. However, there is no quick and easy way to view this notification immediately. You would think that there would be a button you can press to instantly view it or delete it or something. But no, all you're given is a little notification icon in the top left, and you actually have to go through six clicks in order to get to that notification. So you press the C button four times until you get to the notification screen. Then you press the B button. And then you can scroll up and down through your list of notifications. And then finally, you press B and your notification is displayed. And in order to delete that notification, you go back to the message and you hold down the A button. Then you can select delete with the B button, select execute, and it says delete completed. There also is a way to quickly delete all notifications. So it does take several, several clicks in order to read them and delete them. Not the best experience, but nonetheless, the notifications are still a handy feature. Here's another typical notification that just came through from Gmail. So again, you have to go all the way into your notification screen and highlight the notification and then press B to read it. So that's just a quick example of some of the notifications that come through. Another con about this watch is that there is no hourly chime settings, which is kind of a bummer. So if you go into the main watch settings and select alarm, and then go into one of the alarms. You can see that when you're adjusting the alarm, you are able to choose either off, on, or snooze alarm. But there is no way to select an hourly chime, which is usually where you can do this in your typical Casio watch. So that's kind of a bummer, and I will definitely miss that feature as I use that a lot on my watches. Another gripe that I have is that the stopwatch does not display tenths of a second or one hundredths of a second, just simply either minutes or seconds. Uh, one of my subscribers pointed out that it's possible the refresh rate of the MIP display is too slow in order to do that. So it's kind of a bummer, but what are you gonna do? Another con is that it's way too easy to start the workout or training mode. So pressing B from timekeeping mode brings you right into the training workout mode. And there it displays your split time, your distance, and your pace. And all three of those fields are actually configurable. So from this mode, you can press B to start your workout. It'll start counting up. And then you can press B again to stop it. At this point, you're given an option to either resume, save, or delete. So I'm going to go ahead and use the C button to choose delete. And then it says, please wait. And then it keeps saying, please wait. And then it says, please wait for another couple seconds. And then it finally brings you back into timekeeping mode. So if you accidentally press B and you have to go back, it's going to take a little while, which is kind of, uh, kind of a bummer. So here you go. It says, please wait again. Please wait a little more. And then finally, after what seems like eternity, you're brought back into timekeeping mode. And then a tiny little annoyance is that there is no notification when your time is synced up through Bluetooth. You would think there would be some kind of icon or display indicator, but nope, I can't find one anywhere. Apparently the watch syncs at least once a day through Bluetooth. Uh, there is, however, an error message when the time does not sync, so at least there's something there. 
but from what I can see there's no indicator anywhere that tells you that the time on your watch is synced up through Bluetooth. So that is about it for now. I know I've listed a lot of cons, but I really, really like this watch a lot. It's very comfortable, really nice to use. I have heard from people in the comments that the tide mode does not really sync up properly when in specific countries like New Zealand or Australia, so there could be a bug in some of the software, which is a bummer. But overall, this watch is super comfortable, the display is great, the band is nice, it's not too bulky and heavy and fits a wide variety of wrists. And yes, there is no solar power, but again, you can just pop off the back plate here with four screws and input a new G-Shock battery. It only takes a minute or two. Would it have been nice to have? Of course, that would be awesome. But for me, it's not a deal breaker. Apparently it is for some. I believe this watch goes on sale in the U.S. today for pre-order, which is June 12th. So check out the G-Shock website for that. So let me know if you have any additional questions down below. And again, thanks a lot for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel. And we'll check you out next time here at Watching Casio. Have a great day.